Hi, Dave the Wordmonger here. We're going to talk to you today about your guitar and whether or not it's responsible for your uh, ability to play it. In other words, if your guitar feels difficult to play compared to other guitars, there's probably a good reason. Anyhow, I've got an instrument here. I recommend that you read the article as well as watch the video. I'm going to try to avoid saying the same stuff over and over again. I want you to look at this thing. Read the article. The first thing that I want you to notice when you look at your guitar is called the back bow of the neck. This is the neck. Remember that. The back bow refers to the amount of bend that's in the neck, and it should have a little bit of bend, not much. This is how you check it. Take this thing, it's not really a capo, but I'm using it for one. Put it on the first fret. Then you come up here, hold on the last fret. Take a clearance gauge like a, my nifty pick and put it between the strings. And you should have a little bit of clearance. Okay? A little bit. Right around the 12th fret, 9th fret. If the scale is longer, it'll be further up. If it's shorter, it'll be further down. But you should have some clearance. That's necessary for the guitar to inanate as well as to keep it from buzzing talk about that in a little bit. Okay. What affects the back bow of the instrument and the neck is what we call the truss rod. And the truss rod adjustment is done with a typically a wrench. In this instrument, this is a Fender acoustic, there's an Allen head screw right inside the sound hole. Probably can't see it. Anyhow. That truss rod is a bolt that runs through the neck. And what it does is it controls the backbone. If you have too much tension in the truss rod, the neck will be too flat. If you have too loose, the neck will be like this, and you won't be able to play it. Either way, it's no good. If you've never adjusted a truss rod before, I suggest that you do not try it. Take it to a guitar tech. It's not expensive. They're usually in music stores. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. And then you can blame somebody else for your uh, guitar player. <laughs> okay, got the truss rod set up right? Don't break it. Trust me, you do not want to break that thing. And it can break. Okay, got the truss rod set up? What do we want to look at next? This thing up here, it's called the nut. And it's where the strings go through into the headstock. And those slots in the nut are critical. If they're not cut deep enough, your guitar will not play very well. If they're cut too deep, your guitar will, won't sound very good. How do we check this to see if the cut of the nut is correct? Capo the fifth string. Look for clearance down here. You shouldn't have too much. You shouldn't even have this much. Okay, this is about a, uh, when I make this a 70 thousandths pick. That's too much, really. On an acoustic instrument, it should be a little bit higher because the strings are bigger, okay? But there should be almost no clearance in here when you're capoed at the fifth fret. Okay, we got that so far? Good. Now we're going to look at this thing down here, which is called the bridge. And the white part is the saddle. The strings sit on top of the saddle. That determines their height over the fretboard. If you got the right truss rod adjustment and your cut of the nut is correct, 
This is the next thing that affects the playability of your instrument. Here's how you look at that. This clearance in here at the top fret should be a certain dimension for your instrument. On a Fender Electric, it's typically 4 64ths of an inch all the way across the fretboard. All the manufacturers have different specs. This tells you a lot about the factory setup on your instrument. The more money you spend, the better your factory setup is going to be. Actually, this is one of the most critical things to an instrument, is that you have a correct setup. So, we look at the bridge height. On an acoustic, it's going to be more than 464. It's fender. Electric is typically 464, and that's measured up here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this is another thing that I do not recommend that you do unless you're familiar. What can be done? First, you have to take all the strings off. Second, take this piece out. Okay, you can actually replace these pieces. That's kind of nice. But if you screw this one up, you can't fix it. You're going to be getting another one. Take it out. You got the wrong clearance. Everything else is okay. Back bow, the cutter, and the nuts, okay. Shave the back of this down. How do you do that? <laughs> Carefully. With a file. You can use a machine, like an electric sander, but you better be careful and know how much you're taking off because you can't put it back on there. Okay? When we look at the instrument, beyond everything I just said to you, what affects the playability also affects what we call intonation. Intonation means is an A, an A, is an E, an E. So it's a frequency thing and what amounts to is, see this? This is a 12th fret, right? That's supposed to be an octave. It's an octave on any guitar. I don't care how many frets it's got, how long the scale length is, 12th is it, okay? So when we play an E, it should be an E there too. And you can tell by listening to it almost, if you're good. But if you're not good, they have these things called tuning meters. You could look into that. So, you don't, you don't really adjust the intonation on an instrument like this. This has a fixed bridge, but it's also compensated. And you can tell that because it's not a straight line. You have to look real close. But if we look at an electric guitar, it's a little bit different. They're adjustable. For example, on this instrument, it has what we call a tunomatic bridge. Each saddle has an adjustment in it, and that saddle can be moved. And what it does is it determines the distance between the 12th fret and the saddle. So if you move it one way, it affects this note being sharp or flat. And that will change depending on how high the bridge is as well as the cut of the nut and the back bow. So those adjustments should be done first. The last adjustment should be the intonation, because that means you're actually getting closer. So if everything that I said to you is in line with the guitar manufacturer's specs, as far as string clearance at the top of the neck, back bow clearance, and this typically is, uh, you know, maybe a 32nd of an inch in here, okay? You have to look at what the manufacturer says. It's different depending on what instrument you have. Same thing down here, you have good clearance, a little bit, not a lot. If you have a lot of clearance here, the nut needs work. And this is something else you should not do by yourself unless you have experience because you'll be buying another one of those. Anyhow, I've been building guitars for almost 15 years. Most of them are Frankensteins, that's what we call them. 
because we take a neck from one instrument and put it on another one. I usually build the bodies. I get the hardware and the pickups through various sources. I participated in the Musical Instrument Makers Forum years ago when it was just a baby, and now it's pretty big. Anyhow, I appreciate you taking the time, and I hope you can make a decision now about, is it me or my guitar that sucks? <laughs>